You know, it's really sad when a person has an addiction and they don't understand that it is even alive and relevant in their world and they begin to show out and act out. That's what today's topic is going to be, how to remove those addictive tendencies away from your life. Welcome to Chronicles of a Nonprofit, episode 62. It is October 4th. Welcome, welcome to Fall Equinox. Welcome to the time in the season where we're getting ourselves ready for the harvest. And today, I really want to send a shout out to two of the strongest women that I know, Ruth and Sarah. Sarah, you may be going through a lot of transitional changes, and you may be experiencing uh, guilt, remorse, embarrassment, but with a woman like Ruth on your side your mother, helping you to empower yourself to be more, to do more, to have more, to move you out of the areas that you were unaware of. Your growth is going to show forth in that. And it's just like moving an addiction out of your life. When we begin to move addictions out of our lives, first of all, we recognize that the addiction has brought us to a point. And some of us can realize this point before it erupts and destroys a lot of things. So let's talk about those people first. Those people who realize that there's a point and then does something about it, they're more in control of healing faster, healthier, and more robust than a person who allows the point to erupt and then they have a consequence because they ignored the signs. So back to, you know, person number one. You are healing yourself. It is difficult. It's going to be frustrating. Sometimes it's going to be very angry. You know, some of the hardest things to tell someone in today's society is that it's okay not to smoke marijuana when marijuana has a medicinal purpose and can be used legally. But what people don't understand, I had a a conversation with a wonderful woman named Amy who shared that marijuana is not legal, it is medicinal, and you have to have a prescription and you're not supposed to ingest it through smoking you're supposed to ingest it through other means, healthier ways. I didn't know that. I just thought that it was legal, you know, um, in certain states. Well, that's why research is so highly vital and important. And so I, myself, as a recovering survivor, uh, I decided that marijuana, whether it was medicinal, whether it was legal, whether it was Illegal, I'm not touching it. I'm assuming that it's all illegal. But I'm also under, was under the assumption that those who chose to use could use because it was legal. But it's not legal. It is prescribed, it is medicinal, and it is to be used uh, not as a recreational activity. Now, I'm super happy about that. I'm happy about that because I believe that, you know, the FDA does a lot of things and they don't, they, they regulate and they do their best, but they don't hold accountability 10, 20, 25, 30 years later. Look at Camp Lejeune. Look at uh, the, the cases of uh, PERMs that people used over the course of their lives, and now there's lawsuits out. Look at certain things that causes cancer that is in certain ingredients, things like that. So I don't just jump at the major things that happen whenever it's legal. You know what I mean? It is what it is. And keeping that moral fabric, keeping that 
area of existence happening in your life is going to help you as an entrepreneur know who your clients are going to be, how you're going to respond to them, how you're going to relate to them, as well as making sure that you yourself is in a position to where your professionalism is never questioned, okay? So those who are alcoholics that don't recognize that there's alcoholism happening in their lives and they wake up, go to the bathroom, before you know it, the police is knocking at the door, bam, now you have an issue. You didn't wake up expecting your actions to cause a consequence that could make you homeless, that could make you unaware of what is going on, what's taking place. And now you got to go to court. Now you got to pay fines. Now you got to have this, this, you know, whatever on your name. It's just so many things that come with being unaware. And that's what I want to talk to you today about. Now let's take the person who hits that point, does not recognize that it is an issue, and now they have a full-blown consequence. This consequence is going to follow them. Some of us can fight back from it and grow from it and learn from it. But many, look at Jungle Fever. Look at the brother that, uh, oh God, Samuel Jackson. He played that part, Gator. Look at Gator. Go back to Jungle Fever. And look at how, you know, Holly Berry played that part of the crackhead. You know, these things, they build themselves. That dance that... Uh, Gator did on Jungle Fever back in 1991. Guess what? That was a remnant of how he's always behaved. He's behaved in that way because he's always gotten away with it. So it is a point that has blown out of proportion and created a greater consequence in his life. And sometimes that consequence can be death. So it is mindful that we, no matter how you know, we look at things legal, no matter how we look at things as the world changing, we need to be as entrepreneurs so careful and so cautious for nothing to remove certain things from our lives. If we have an issue with uh, relationships, the last thing we want to do is incorporate a new woman or a new man in our relationship and start a relationship that is unstable because we're unhealthy. So we need to be getting the healing that is necessary. I see another thing in business, and it is a trend that is coming to me more and more, and that is the presumption that this individual holds an LLC and has stolen information from other organizations and has, you know, created websites, pages, and they're not doing what they say that they're doing. And then they want to collaborate with other organizations. Be very mindful of that, because if you don't get the certification necessary to put on your books, if something goes wrong, your organization, your nonprofit, your for-profit, your sole proprietor um, establishment is going to be looked at. And now that could be anything. So that's something I want you to really, really pay attention to as shining entrepreneurs. Do something better. Do a little more research. Get in there and find the laws. You know, sometimes like even in eviction, I have to learn in the state of Ohio, you know, regardless of what, the rules are the rules. And it's not what you do, but how you do it. It's not what you do, but how you do it. And so, so we must know the laws in order to be able to protect ourselves. Another, another situation, removing these women and these men that are destroying our lives. We can think we're in love. We can know we're in love, but the intuition and the discernment of life is going to teach us no. When, <coughs> excuse me, my allergies. But when there are times when we have to continually express those feelings of torment, anguish, pain, suffering, we should know that those are signs that it is not 
a good thing to continue to engage no matter how far we are in the relationship. No, how, no matter how far we don't want to lose because we've invested so much already. When there are red flags, we need to recognize and we need to grow and we need to know that it is time to back away. We need to know when enough is enough. <laughs> I tell you, when enough is enough. Someone just asked me the question yesterday. When is enough enough? When do we say that there is no need for the mundane, regular routine if it is bringing us all the way down to the lowest point? Women, because you're in a relationship with a narcissistic man and you feel your health is being played by the actions and activities of this man, you need to recognize when enough is enough. Because when you are ill, there is nothing else but the fight to live. And there goes that point again, that point of consequence. So you've allowed this man to manipulate and use you to the point of sickness. Now you're ill. Guess what he's saying? Oh, you're not strong enough to get up now. Oh, uh, you let everything happen and come between us, and this is all your fault. They're not going to accept accountability. They're not going to accept responsibility for taking you to your lowest point. They never do. It's not, ne it's not needed to go back. So back to my two wonderful women, my, 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 the women that, whose names are in the Bible show strength, courage, shows, um, you know, a lot of strength. And I'm so grateful to you, Sarah and Ruth. Again, you are phenomenal. You're going to make it through. We're empowering you. We're letting you know that this is not going to stay forever. It's a temporary state. So continue to enjoy and embrace your freedom and your love for each, for each other as mother and daughter to move towards healing. Counseling is very, very necessary. Counseling is necessary. When you're going through these basic life situations, these things that would otherwise break you down, cause you to resort to the things that you saw your perpetrator doing, is not the key. Do not follow by example. Do not follow by example. Because, yeah, yeah, counseling, healing, prayer, meditation, walking, nature. These are things that's going to heal. So removing ourselves from addictive opportunities within one year will make us greater because we took the initiative to try, take a day, put it on the shelf, at least hold it there, not so self-gratifying, give it a little bit of time, feel a little bit of pain, feel a little separation, you know, take that break, don't answer the phone call every time the phone call comes through, sit back and give it a, a, a day, you know, say that you need that space. And then that day becomes two days, becomes four days, becomes a week, becomes two weeks, a month, a year. And before you know it, you're standing on your feet and the pain does not feel the same. There is no pain. It is, it is numb, but in a good, positive way because you've moved on and you've replaced it, you know, with healing. And that's something I had to do when I realized that there was an addiction to alcohol in my life. For me, I had to go back to the drawing board. And I know that it started in my bedroom when I was very young. Addiction was right in my bedroom, sliding closet that could be opened at any time. It was like addiction said, this is what we're going to do. This is how it's going to be done. 
Or could it have been poverty? I don't know. Could it have been naivety? I don't know. But what I do know is that that point of life brought us all the way to a consequence of disturbance. And that disturbance created out of it a healing which turned into something greater, something better for our lives, but it was still there. And some of us don't heal from those traumatic events. So take that time, grow, learn, love, heal. And for those who have allowed the consequence to come to a point, to a degree, that it has ruptured the lifestyle of the individual, whether you're an entrepreneur or not, now you have to leave your business. You have to leave your establishment. Now bills won't get paid. Now things are getting repossessed. Now wives are getting divorces. Husbands are leaving, cheating. All these things are taking place because of consequences of behavior that has caught up to the initiator. And it feels lonely. It feels as though there is no end that end in sight, but it is. Because each day you make the right conscious decision to say, I heal myself today. I'm going to go ahead and go through whatever I need to go through to heal myself, not just to get out or to make it easier, but to really and truly genuinely. Because when everybody the same thing and you are and it is dragging you all the way down, all the way down. OK. Not just saying it just to be a liar, to manipulate and destroy your life. No, but to actually say that this is destroying your life and literally seeing the life being destroyed, lowering the standards of living, constantly getting in chaos, then something is wrong. Not what the individual is telling you, but the perpetrator, the initiator itself, himself, herself. So please recognize what I'm saying to you in this podcast. I don't know why I got on. I was so hyper and I was so into, you know, this topic about removing things from your life that no longer serve your highest good. And if you do that today, I sit back and I look at the time I was serious about walking the park. I was serious about going to, you know, the health and the fitness clubs. And it lasted for a brief moment. And I see little snippets of that time in my life years later. And I say to myself, God, if I had kept that up, where would I be today? Physically. Physically. I mean, I'm good. I'm good. But where would I be physically? Would I have made the better choice to eat salad and spinach and, and juice my, my fruits and vegetables? Or snack on candy and snack on pop and snack on, you know, chips, you know. These are things that I'm coming to a fruitful understanding about. That choices and consequences are ours. And no matter what, if we don't fight it, we're going to lose it. We have Everything is a fighting battle in this world. And when we as entrepreneurs take that initiative and realize that that's where we're going in our lives then everything else will be fruitful. Everything else will be added to us. And, you know, everybody is not supposed to hear this. Everybody is not supposed to listen to the Chronicles of a Nonprofit. Only those who value the information. Only those who really know that they're going somewhere or want it to go somewhere or wish to go somewhere or are thinking about going somewhere. This will matter to you. All others, yeah, no, it's not going to work. So this is a pre-recording for those uh, entrepreneurs who are part of the journey. And yesterday I had such a phenomenal day. It was a great day and it was a sad day. It was um, both happy, sad. It, it, it was those chronicles. It was the high and the low of life. And in life, as entrepreneurs, we're going to have those days. But today is a better day. Today is a day where it comes together. I learned some things. I experienced some new things 
that I know is going to catapult me into the journey in which I'm about to embark upon. And this is the reason why it showed up to show me what I need to do, how I need to handle certain things and what rights I have as an individual and what rights I have to support other individuals. And that is the key. That is the take home. And again, addiction can bring us down to a weak level to where we have everything in the world that we would want and we can lose it all in one day. So please be mindful of that. Entrepreneurs keep shining, keep being consistent, keep being on time and being the best person walking in the shoes in which you wear every day. And we will see you next time.